Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about SpO2 and pulse oximetry. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. SpO2, that is saturation of peripheral oxygen. What do you mean by oxygen saturation? Oxygen saturation may be defined as the ratio of oxyhemoglobin to the total concentration of hemoglobin present in the blood. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin. One molecule of hemoglobin can carry up to four molecules of oxygen after which it is described as saturated with oxygen. So oxygen saturation is an indicator of oxygen transport in the body and this indicates that if sufficient oxygen is being supplied to the body, especially to the lungs. So now we get an idea of how hemoglobin is getting saturated with oxygen. Next, let's discuss what is oxygen saturation and desaturation. Oxygen saturation is defined as the ratio of oxygen content to oxygen capacity of hemoglobin expressed as a percentage. Next is desaturation. Desaturation is a relative deficiency of oxygen in arterial blood. Here, partial pressure of oxygen is less than 80 mmHg which leads to hypoxemia. Normally, a healthy individual with normal lungs breathing air at sea level will have an arterial oxygen saturation between 95% to 100%. Extremes of altitude will affect these numbers. So far, we have discussed how hemoglobin gets saturated and what is oxygen saturation and desaturation and what is the normal range. Now, how is oxygen saturation monitored? So here comes the term pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry, sometimes called the fifth vital sign, is a non-invasive method of measuring SpO2 by using a light signal transmitter through the tissues. Hence, a low level of SpO2 can provide warning of hypoxemia before other signs such as cyanosis or a change in heart rate are observed. Now, what does a pulse oximeter actually measures? There are two numerical values obtained from the pulse oximeter monitor. One is SpO2 and the other is the pulse rate. Oximeter detects the saturation peripherally on a finger, toe or ear. The result is recorded as the peripheral oxygen saturation described as SpO2. Next is the pulse rate. The volume of blood being pumped by the heart per minute is called the cardiac output. The frequency of pumping during one minute is called the pulse rate which is also displayed along with SpO2 in the pulse oximeter monitor. Next comes uses of pulse oximeter. As we know, Oxygen saturation and heart rate are essential indicators of hemodynamic status of an individual. And pulse oximeter helps to monitor these indicators during anesthesia before any surgery, procedural sedation and analgesia, example reduction of fractures, etc. During tapping procedures like lumbar puncture and other invasive procedures, especially in infants, Pulse oximeter is also used while transporting patient within the hospital or to other hospitals. Next, pulse oximeter is used for evaluation of clinical status like apnea monitoring in infants, periodic breathing, obstructive sleep apnea. Next is monitoring of the airway. Pulse oximeter is used for monitoring the airway during various instances. For example, in intensive care unit, when the patient is mechanically ventilated, pulse oximeter plays a vital role in monitoring the hemodynamic status. Pulse oximeter is helpful in monitoring oxygen saturation during weaning from oxygen therapy. Pulse oximeter is useful during non-invasive procedures as an indicator for positive pressure ventilation. It is always helpful to monitor oxygen saturation during pre-oxygenation, prior and during airway procedures, for example, intubation. It is used for evaluation of the need for increased FiO2 and or or a definitive airway. Pulse oximeter is also used to detect problems with a definitive airway, for example, misplaced or obstructed endotracheal tube. Next, pulse oximeter is helpful in monitoring the oxygenation in unstable or critically ill patients, example, hypotension, shock, respiratory disease or failure, cardiopulmonary arrest. 
Pulse oximeter is helpful in monitoring patients with a potential for hypoxia, apnea, respiratory distress or failure and shock. Also, pulse oximeter plays a vital role in monitoring patients with pulmonary disease for example asthma, COPD, bronchiolitis, reactive airway disease, pneumonia or airway obstruction. It is also helpful in monitoring patients with cardiac disease for example heart failure, cyanotic congenital heart disease, acute coronary syndrome or cardiomyopathy. Next comes SpO2 level. Now let's discuss the ranges of SpO2 and what does it indicate. SpO2 level of equal or above 95% indicates normal range. Now SpO2 between 88% to 92% is normal for COPD patients. Between 88% and 92% oxygen level is considered safe for someone with moderate to severe COPD. A saturation level of oxygen below 88% becomes dangerous for patients. SpO2 range between 88 and 92% do not need any invasive intervention. Anyway, it has to be correlated with patient condition and monitored continuously. Now, SpO2 between 91 to 94% is considered borderline. During such instance, we have to check the probe placement and adjust if necessary. Why? Because when the probe gets displaced, there may be some deviation in the SpO2 range. Next, when SpO2 level is between 91 to 94%, in case of ventilator patients, we have to check for visible or audible secretions and do suction if needed because accumulated secretions may also deviate the normal SpO2 level. And when SpO2 is between 91 to 94%, it is safe to begin oxygen at 2 liters per minute titrated to SpO2 more than 93%. Next, SpO2 range between 85% to 90% indicates hypoxic. SpO2 level of less than 85% indicates severely hypoxic where the interventions include assessing airway and suction as needed. Next, administer oxygen and titrate to SpO2 more than 95%. Positioning of the patient where head of the bed is elevated and increase the patient to cuff. If condition worsens, assist ventilations manually and prepare to intubate. Next comes limitations or causes of false reading in pulse oximeter. False high readings could be due to severe anemia that is decreased red blood cells and carbon monoxide poisoning where carbon monoxide has an affinity to hemoglobin 210 greater than oxygen. Patients movements can also affect pulse oximeter reading including shivering and poor placement can also affect the reading. False high readings could also be due to hypovolemia. Next comes false low readings, which could be caused by improper probe placement, hypothermia due to decreased perfusion. High venous pressure could also cause false low readings, which may be due to congestive heart failure, traumatic venous obstruction, application of tourniquet and inflation of BP manometer cuff on the same hands where the pulse oximeter probe is fixed it also leads to false low readings. Other reasons include vasopressor drugs due to vasoconstriction and stray ambient light that is sunlight also causes false low readings. So here you go with SpO2 and pulse oximeter. So far we have discussed what is oxygen saturation and desaturation and how hemoglobin gets saturated with oxygen and different ranges of oxygen saturation and what does it indicate and uses of pulse oximeter during various instances. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.